Well, this is our eighth installment of toys. Um, this year is the first year that we will actually have the toy show up for an entire month. Previously, uh, the gallery spaces or non-traditional gallery spaces that we've used, we only had access to that space, you know, maybe for the weekend, um, which resulted in a one-night show. The gallery will be open during normal business hours, so anyone, you know, can just walk in, tour the gallery, see the space, see the work, and the work was up and for sale for the whole month. We do, throughout the year, kind of keep an eye out for artists who interest us, whose work we see just by being out on First Friday um, that's really, you know, new, interesting, and kind of, you know, above the norm. Uh, there were no theme shows going on in town at that time, and, and we thought that a theme show would be appropriate, and the timing of the year was in December, so we came up with the idea of uh, the, the theme being toys. Uh, and that way the artist could interpret that however they wanted to. It didn't necessarily have to be literally a toy, but they could uh, you know, use their own artistic creativity to come up with a, a piece for the show. We would look for uh, artists who had consistency in their work, uh, artists who executed their work with, with high quality of craftsmanship, quality of materials, um, people who were taking it seriously. A lot of times we'll meet artists or we get submissions from artists who really interest us. And when we see their work at, at Art versus Art or Installation Nation, we you know, are intrigued and ask them to come back and participate in toys, often because we like their work so much that we want to see what else they could do under a specific theme of toys. It's, it's interesting to watch it now that I'm not really a part of the organization to see it, it still continue. And, the, uh, you know, and it still evolves because each time they do it, w once somebody does a, a particular piece, then you can't really touch that again that subject or that particular toy with, you know, without doing a new twist on it. So as an artist and participating in it, if you know the history of it, it becomes harder and harder each year to come up with something that's original for the toy show because it has been going on for so long. We don't uh, ask for a cut of artist sales at toys. This was kind of in the long tradition of us just putting on this show um, for free admission, no charge to the artist. We don't charge them an artist submission fee. We don't take a cut of their um, art sale if they sell their piece, just because we feel like it's in the spirit of um, goodwill, especially this time of the year. Well, I focus on my pieces uh, when you have nothing to do and you're completely bored. Um, you start looking around and playing and doing things with uh, items at your desk. One thing that I always used to do was to twist up uh, paper clips. Uh, either make little sculptures or make the little spring toy that you drop and it turns it into a spring. So that was sort of the inspiration for my piece. And uh, instead of doing, uh, you know, actual paper clips, I, I fabricated some larger scale ones. Uh, I got the email asking if I was willing to participate, and I uh, I immediately jumped on the offer and said yes. I'm doing a, uh, a larger ma uh, model version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I'm gonna be repurposing a, an old coffee table that I had at the house and turning that into my uh, the stationary table that the whole set sits on so that two people can battle it out and play. It's a toy and it needs to be played with and hopefully it can stand the test of time and be able to uh, stick around and get handed down for generations. I started off in photography. Um, that's what I went to school for originally. And uh, one of my electives was uh, a uh, ceramics class. And as soon as my hands hit the clay, I was just like, OK, I want to you know, major in this as well. And I mean, pretty much any facet of art besides, I guess, like a pencil or a paintbrush, I'm, I'm really drawn to. It was more about process. I'm very process oriented. So I mean, like there was no particular direction that I started in. Um, it, like I found the, um, the molds to create these forms, um, these commercial uh, molds, and then I just started manipulating one after another. And like sort of after making like so many of them, uh, grew the content of uh, the piece. Well, I've been in uh, a part of the arts community for uh, well over 30 years. I have actually done series of toys in the past, um, and they're all based on things from my childhood. Um, a lot of things from the late 50s, early 60s, into the 70s, and uh, a lot of interpretations of, of those things, and I still have most of these things, kind of a hoarder, I guess. This year, we decided to partner with VSA, 
and we are collecting donations of new and gently used art supplies for the programming that VSA offers. We feel strongly that VSA is a really great organization and um, we felt like we could really help them this year by collecting donations for them and by help promoting their cause and awareness for the organization.